Well, hello everyone. We are in a new book for the next um, two weeks here. Well, for the next week, we're in this new book for the weeks, lessons 14, let's see, 15 and 16. And the new book is The World Wars. The World Wars. So here we go, okay? So we're gonna start on page six. And we are just gonna be reading together and I just need you to be listening and I'll kind of point out a few things and we will go to it. So here we go. This is just gonna just be a little intro on the first two pages here. So I'm on page six and seven, which has that big airplane on it, right? And the page numbers are pretty clear on the bottom of most pages here. So you can see that six and seven. So the first half of the 20th century was dominated by worldwide conflict. And the 20th century member is the 1900s. It's always a little weird. So 20th century is 1900s. 21st century is the 2000s, right? So the first half of the 20th century was dominated by worldwide conflict during the First World War, 1914 to 1918, and the Second World War, which was 1939 to 1945. Those are some important dates. Those are some important dates that I think you should remember. Um, so I may ask you those again at the end. You gotta be able to tell me what they are, okay? So write that down, write that down somewhere. First World War, 1914 to 1918. Second World War, 1939 to 1945. Write those down somewhere. Most of the same nations were pitted against each other. To some, this made it seem like one long war with a 20 year lull between fighting. At stake was the mastery of the world, but the final outcome was not what many of the leading players on either side would have hoped for or expected. In seeking to defend or increase their power, Britain, France, and Germany lost their dominant position to the United States and to Soviet Russia. All right, so this is the section here, bad to worse. 20,000 British soldiers died on the first day of the Battle of the Somme, the world's the worst day's slaughter for Britain in the First World War. People were shocked, but there was worse to come. In the Second World War, this many would die every one or two days on the Eastern Front in savage fighting between German and Soviet forces. When they say East, right, we've got the East of the United States, but then we have the East of the world, which is all the way over there in Russia. American troops, there's a picture there, ride into battle on French tanks during the late stages of the First World War. Early tanks took slight, look slightly comical to us now, but they terrified troops who had to defend trenches against them. And remember, trenches are like things you dig down and you're inside the trenches. Man-made catastrophes. Between them, the First and Second World Wars make up the greatest man-made catastrophes in history. Almost every inhabited region on Earth was drawn into the struggle, which was fought from the de deserts of North Africa to the rainforests of New Guinea. Ordinary people were more involved in the hostilities than they had been in any previous conflicts. And far more civilians died than those in the armed forces. And of course, civilians are people who are not fighting in the war. They're just you and me that just live in the area where the war is going through. And we've never really had that in America in um, a few hundred years, not since like the Mexican-American War or the Civil War. The Civil War would be the last time that, you know, the battles have gone through where we are. During 10 years of global carnage, global, like worldwide, ugh, worldwide, just death and destruction, empires fell and countries were destroyed or created. At least 76 million people were killed and many were left homeless. 60 years after the end of the Second World War, both wars still haunt and fascinate us today. Recent events in world history, from the disillusion of the Soviet Union to the turmoil of the Middle East and the emergence of the United States as the world's only superpower all have their roots in these two brutal conflicts. Even in the 21st century, they continue to shape current events. Okay, so, and there's a link here, and I'm gonna put that in there, and that's a link where you can read illustrated accounts of the wars and how they affected people in places around the world, and you can go to that and see that. And um, a British Lancaster bomber of the Second World War, bomber aircraft caused massive damage to cities and industry hundreds of miles behind the enemy lines. And here's Russian women and children in 1941, driven from their homes by the fighting, cast a wary eye on a German supply column. The column is the supply people coming through. They have good reason to fear their conquerors who treated Soviet citizens with great cruelty. Okay, and now we have this beautiful picture here. 
which says the First World War. Beautiful picture of flowers there. The First World War, and this is actually page um, nine, or let's see, yeah, nine, but there's no page number on it. The First World War was a human tragedy on a global scale. It began in Europe, but countries from around the world were soon dragged into the fighting. The war lasted four, for four dark years. And you know the dates, 1914 to 1918. And a staggering 65 million men were mobilized to fight. Mobilized means they got them ready to fight. Over 21 million people died, including 13 million civilians. 13 million people that weren't even fighting in the war. I'm sorry, I've got a little bit of a sore throat. So I'm probably going to be having to sip this a bit. The terrible impact of the war sparked revolutions, toppled once great empires, and changed the political map of Europe forever. One of the poppy fields in northern France where some of the bloodiest battles of the war took place. Many soldiers were struck by the beauty of the poppies that grew wild on the battlefields, and the poppy became a symbol of remembrance of the people who died in the war. You would kind of call that irony, right? That you have this beautiful field and people are dying in it. That would be ironic because it's not what you would expect to be happening. Okay. Okay. So now we are on page 10. We've got a really great map here that I'm going to probably ask you to flip back to quite a bit. And so I'm actually going to include a separate page 11 that I can just be like, open the map, open the map. So you can see this because as we talk, you want to be able to see what's going on. Okay. So the first world war was fought on such a massive scale. And you remember the years of it. Say them to yourself. 1914 to 1918. The First World War was fought on such a massive scale that people called it the Great War. Never before had any war been fought on so many battlefields with such a vast array of powerful and destructive weapons and resulted in so many deaths. The reason this war was so destructive was that it was the first major war between the newly industrialized nations of Europe. In the days before factories, trains, and steamships, wars often involved hundreds of men charging into battle on foot or horseback, brandishing swords. But this time, for the first time, it was possible to transport millions of men quickly to the front and to arm them with an almost endless supply of the latest mass-produced weapons and ammunition. Machine guns, poison gas, barbed wire, as well as planes, tanks, and submarines all came into use, some for the first time, with devastating effect. Um, this is a picture of a movie with a German soldier being thrown from his feet. And this week we're going to start some world geography a little bit. I'm going to kind of put in a little bit of world geography so you can start seeing where some of these, um, countries are, um, that are fighting, um, because it's important that we, we understand where this is in the world. So now we're over in Europe. Okay. So we've crossed the Atlantic and actually, okay. If you look on page 11 there. Scoot ahead to page 11 for a minute. Actually, you know what? Go back to page 10 and look at this tiny little map up here in the corner. You see that? So you can see, I want you to point to where we live. Okay, that's the United States. So you should be pointing over here. Okay, that's where we live. If you flew straight from kind of like where we live over here across to the across the Atlantic Ocean, you would hit some islands in the middle of the Atlantic called the Azores. I used to live there and Abigail used to live there. Okay, those were the Azores. They belonged to Portugal. And then if you keep going, you would hit Portugal. So then jump to this map. Jump to this big map right here. Okay, and right over here, I want you to find Portugal. I want you to put your finger on Portugal. Okay, so, so you understand where from the U.S. we are. We've gone across the Atlantic Ocean, and now we are in Europe. Okay, and we kind of call all of this area Europe. Um, it kind of switches over into Asia but we're in Europe here at this point. And, um, and you're gonna, you're gonna, this is where this battle is going to be fighting for. Okay. So if you go back now to that tiny little map, it shows how in August, 1917, most of the world had divided into two sides of the world. On one side were the allied powers shaded green on this map. And on the other side were the central powers shaded red. Only those places shaded yellow remain neutral. Okay, jump back to your big map again. I keep having you move back and forth between page 10 and 11. This kind of shows you how the world was split up, okay? 
And you can actually, this is how Europe is split up. But if you look on the small map, you can see that we were green. So we were an allied power. And so you've got the green is fighting the red is basically what's happening in this war. Okay. And the yellow is trying to stay out of it. The yellow is trying to be like, we don't want to be a part of this. But the green is fighting the red in this war. Okay. The most powerful countries involved had empires with colonies and influence in every corner of the globe. So although the war began in Europe, it rapidly spread to the wider world. And soon men from the colonies were drawn into the fray. Beyond Europe, fighting took place on land in Africa and Asia and at sea in the South Atlantic and the Pacific. All together, 28 countries became involved, um, making it the first war to be called a world war. So it's the first time that we've said we have a world war going on. We're not just in the United States. We're not just in Russia. We're not just in um, France. We are actually in the whole world, as you can see on that map there, because even Australia is green, right? All these people had picked a side. Most people had picked a side. Okay, so now we are officially on page 11, okay? And um, and I wanted, you know, if I asked you, why is World War I called the Great War? Okay, what would you say? What would you say? Why is it called the Great War? Um, because all key European nations had colonies. So like Britain controlled lands around the world. Um, they even had an expression that said the sun never set on the British empire because the British owned places so far around the world that when the sun would set in one part of Britain, it was actually up in another part of Britain because they owned these places all over the war. France and Germany did too. So 28 nations were involved. The most people that died in a war ever. And a big reason is that we have new weapons. Okay. So like I said, it used to be that just like, oh, these guys were here and they fought the battle. But now we can put people on trains and we can put people on planes and we can put people um, and we have all these great weapons, great weapons, right? That's a little bit of an oxymoron that you call a weapon great. So the total war affected the lives, I'm reading on 11, of civilians more than any previous war because for the first time, um, they were expected to help their country in the war effort. Workers had to step up agriculture, step up agriculture and industrial production to keep their troops armed, clothed, and fed. All this meant that people far from the fighting became targets for the enemy attack. Factories and supply routes were almost were most at risk, but risk, but bombs fell on homes, schools, and places of worship too. This kind of unrestricted warfare in which pop, whole populations are involved in the effort is sometimes called a total war. Okay, so on this page, it has another link. So I actually think I'd like to try to do these links with you and I will have them there. So let's go back, let's go back here. Well, I'm not gonna worry about that one right now, but let's go to this, this new link and I'm gonna see if I can pull it up here and then I would have it available for you. Let me see if I can do this. Give me one second, because I wasn't planning on doing this, but I'm going to, um, let's see, we've got, our book is called The World Wars. There it is. Okay, show me the links. Okay. So, ah, here we go. I can just go to page 10 and 11. Okay, and I can just pop the links up. So that's what I'm going to do. So when we get to this, um, let's see, it says page 10 and 11. Oh, I'm a little bit ahead of myself. Okay. What happened during the First World War? Oh, isn't that something? Okay. So here's what we're going to do then. This is really, really, really neat. Um, so the First World War, what happened during the First World War and what started it? Okay, so I'm going to have a link up there that is called Who Started World War I. So what I want you to do right now, you see this? Ooh, boo, 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 boo. See that? There it is. Okay, so what I want you to do right now is I want you to pause my video and I want you to pop over to the link entitled Who Started World War I. And it's a three minute and 18 second video. And I want you to watch that and then you're going to come back to my video. Okay. 
So I wish there was a way I could watch it with you, but I don't know if I can. Let me see if I could. Yeah, I think it's going to be better if you pause it and watch it. So go pop over, watch that 3 minute 18 video, and then restart the video. Okay, so if you restarted your video, you are back with me now. And we are going to now go to the interactive timeline, okay? So what I want you to do, this is a really, really cool link. Wow, wow, wow. These are so neat. So um, this is the interactive timeline of the war. So I want you now to pause the video again. And I want you to click on my link that is called... Let me see what the link is going to be called when we when we pull it up because I think that's going to make it better for you guys. Uh, let's see what the link is going to be called. Okay, so the link one link is called World War One Timeline Experience. So I want you to take a minute and pause that, and you guys are actually oh my gosh, is this not the coolest? This is so cool. So as you get to things here, this is the neatest thing. You can actually click on the different pictures here and pull these up. Is that not the neatest thing? So as we get to different things, we can pull those up. It's just incredible. Um, I'm, I'm so impressed with these links. So take a minute and look at the World War I timeline experience. Um, and um, pull my YouTube video up here in a separate link so that you can pop over there if you want to. Because as we get to different things, you guys, we're going to be able to click on these and I'm going to be able to tell you to watch them. And that's just so neat. I'm so impressed with this. Um, and then there's going to be a quiz we're going to be able to take too. Um, uh, let's see. We've got a war quiz. Wow. Okay. And then there's a video here with where you can find out how much you know about the World War. And I think I'll, I'll maybe have you do that at the end and see how you can do on that video. Okay. So that's all through page 10 and 11. Really, really cool stuff there um, as we get started on the Great War. So we're going to stop the video here. We've only gotten to page 11 in there, but that's okay. That's fantastic. And what I want you to do right now is I want you to go take the war quiz, okay? And I want you to just take it, and then I want you to tell me at the end what you get on it. And I'm going to take it too and see what you get. And I want you to leave me a private comment on here with what you got, because we're going to take it later and see how much better you do after this gets going. And we'll be back.